Welcome to The Sarah Scoop Show. It's time to get the scoop with Sarah. My name is Peter Woodward. Um, I'm a writer and an actor, and uh, most recently uh, in Dolphin Island, a movie for families. Dolphin Island is is uh, directed by a, a great friend of mine, Mike Deeser, who said, uh, I've got this uh, movie that I want you to, to be in. Unfortunately, you have to play a grandfather. And I said, well, of course, I'm far too young for that. Um, it'll be my first grandfather role. <laughs> um, and uh, But then he said it's in the shooting in the Bahamas. So I said, I'm already there. I'm absolutely, yes. Um, and uh, I really like the script. Um, and the final finished version of the movie is something quite unusual because it really is a genuine family movie um, where you can watch it as, as an adult and enjoy it. But at the same time, you can have your you know, young children and teens and preteens with you and they'll all get something out of it. They'll all enjoy it. Um, and there's very few movies that you can say that about these days, unfortunately. Um, so I was very pleased about that. Um, the story is very simple. It's uh, uh, I play the grandfather. Um, who has a, a granddaughter uh, whose uh, parents have, have uh, both died. So she's an orphan. And um, uh, basically we live together on a boat. Uh, we go out fishing in the Bahamas a great deal. And her best friend is a dolphin at the local dolphin sanctuary. Um, and along come the other set of grandparents who are from New York and very rich and say, this is not the way to bring up a child you know, in the beautiful sunshine with uh, her great friends at school with a lovely dolphin in the Bahamas. I can't think why they think that, but they don't. <laughs> and um, uh, so it, basically the movie is about, you know, what happens and, uh, and there are various interventions from local friends and from dolphins and it all turns out, out all right in the end. Yes, indeed. I mean, obviously, it was great to work in, in the Bahamas. Um, it was just before COVID. Uh, the Bahamas were hit a few years back with Hurricane Dorian, and it was, uh, it was a lot of damage done. Um, so it was very good to, to be there and to see, you know, how beautiful the islands still were and how much they had recovered. Um, and, uh, you know, we felt good about, about employing a lot of people. And, and, um, and then, of course, COVID happens. So, you know, that was that was very tough and it is tough for everybody but especially for those islands and places that rely on tourism and the other thing is i think that you know they can get from the movie what they want to get it's it's uh, um certainly about uh, about families and the difficulties that families can have which i think is uh, is important for a, a lot of kids you know who don't necessarily come from an ordinary family with you know two grown-up adults who stay together forever also i think the main message is just entertainment you know, it's just really good, I think, to sit in front of a movie with your family and enjoy yourselves, especially in the past year of, of COVID, where, you know, doing things together with the family has, for some of us, been a bit difficult because we can't get away from them. You know? <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I think a, a piece of entertainment that you can all sit down together with and get something from and, and enjoy it, I think that's really important. I mean, I think um, so many of us have had a really tough time last year. Um, yeah, I've been lucky enough to, to keep working because uh, most of my life I spend as a writer now. So, of course, during COVID, I could just sit at my desk and, and keep writing, which I did. And uh, uh, but an awful lot of people, you know, um, in my in the entertainment industry and the travel industry and lots of industries, you know, have lost their jobs. They've been, um, you know, really hit hard by that. And, you know, although there's been government assistance, it's, it's been a very tough year for a lot of people. You know, hopefully now we can see the, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, I hope. Um, yeah, I've had my vaccinations. So I actually had COVID in, in October. Uh, fortunately, I was not, um, uh, you know, it was very mild for me. But a friend of mine in March of last year, an actor friend of mine, Jay Benedict, he died of COVID. He was one of the early ones to die. Um, and it, it really affected me uh, and affected, you know, all of his friends. He was such a wonderful man and such a lovely guy, a lovely family man. And that's happened so much, you know. Um, I had that experience in March. And so I was appalled that people were not taking it seriously, um, especially in this country. And no names. But, you know, for many, many months, nobody took it seriously enough. 
despite what all the doctors said and um, until finally people realized, okay, we do have to deal with this. So, you know, it's, it's been a very tough time. Yeah. It is important for, for entertainment to sometimes take us out of that and, uh, and give us a, a vision of what life will be again for us all, you know, um, and it will be. Yeah. That's important. When we were there, um, we didn't face too many challenges because, as I say, the island is very resilient. I mean, they all are. You know, they've been through plenty of hurricanes. This was a particularly bad one. They're very resilient, very hardworking. And, um, you know, uh, they welcomed us and, and uh, it, was, it was just uh, very enjoyable altogether. Um, uh, and as I say, it was done just before COVID um, uh, hit us all. So um, we were very lucky to, um, to do it. I mean, unfortunately you know, uh, Bahamas and, and islands like it. It is one of those places where, which has been particularly hit first by a hurricane and then by COVID. Um, the only thing they haven't had is, is an invasion of cats. Um, and so <laughs> whenever I'm doing an interview, <laughs> one of these cats comes to join in. <laughs> so, um, so at least they haven't had that, which is a terrible thing. But yeah, no, it, it, I mean, it was, it, was, it was great to be there and I really hope to go back there very soon. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've started to travel uh, now. I've, um, I've just been in Ireland so talking about a, a TV series for, for the summer. And um, yeah, so, you know, travel is beginning to open up um, and thank goodness for that. Um, the only thing they haven't had is, is an invasion of cats. Um, and so <laughs> whenever I'm doing an interview, <laughs> one of these cats comes to join in. <laughs> so, um, so at least they haven't had that, which is a terrible thing. But yeah, no, it, it, I mean, it was, it, was, it was great to be there and I really hope to go back there very soon. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've started to travel uh, now. I've, um, I've just been in Ireland so talking about a, a TV series for, for the summer. And um, yeah, so, you know, travel is beginning to open up. Um, and thank goodness for that. This particular cat's name is Mel. Um, we have a whole bunch of cats, uh, <laughs> including one that we, um, that we found just outside in the garden that I'm looking at now, um, absolutely starving and, and you know, um, brought him in. And of course, the problem with, with doing that is that you then feel responsible and have to take them to vets, right? And vets bills, okay? <laughs> you know? So it's like, a, this is a thousand dollar cat. Not this one, this one's fine, <laughs> but the other one. So yeah, we've got sort of three and a half of these things. Um, and again, especially through COVID, you know, if you, have a, if you have a pet, if you have an animal, even if you're on your own, you know, it really gives you an enormous amount because it, it makes you worry and think about, other creatures other than yourselves, you know, and I think that's important to do. But you've had quite enough attention, so down you go. <laughs> I spent uh, the first sort of four or five months of, of the COVID lockdown um, uh, writing seven episodes of a TV series which is going to be shooting in Ireland um, uh, this summer. Um, and it's, it's based on a movie that I made many years ago uh, called Brill Cream Boys, in which I was an actor. Um, and uh, we've always wanted to make a TV series of it. And, and here it is 20 years later. Um, it, it's, it's set in Ireland, uh, which was neutral during the Second World War. And so any um, British or allied or German aviators or mariners who were washed ashore or crashed, they were put into an internment camp. Um, and unfortunately, they were put in the same camp with just a wire between the Germans and the Allies. The crazy thing about it is because they were internees and not prisoners, they were allowed out on parole. You know, they signed a parole saying, yes, I will be back by eight, eight, eight o'clock tonight. And they were allowed out so they could go to the pubs, they could go you know, to the races, they could go have, have Irish girlfriends, you know, this crazy world. And they'd be walking down the street and they'd see a German, you know, walking past them. You know? <laughs> um, and we just thought it, it was a a uh, opportunity for a great deal of comedy, a um, great deal of romance between the uh, these young men and the the, the local Irish women, um, and uh, also you know uh, uh, we've got a, a subplot of of, um, uh, of of spying and lots of intelligence work that was going on in Ireland at the time, because everyone was desperate to either 
keep Ireland out of the war or to somehow get Ireland into the war. <laughs> you know, so it was, it was an extraordinary um, period of time, which hasn't really been covered um, or isn't much known about. Um, so yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun doing that. I've also um, just directed my first movie uh, called Outrageous. And I've just finished that down in, uh, in New Orleans and um, I'm in post-production on that now. So you know, hopefully end of this year, beginning of next year, that'll be, um, be coming out. A lot of the scripts that I've written um, in the past have been um, historical or his history based. And I just love history. I used to do a lot of work for the, for the History Channel, um, both uh, presenting and writing for them. Um, and, you know, I, I find it just endlessly fascinating. Uh, the little you know, nooks and crannies of history that you come up with, uh, that you find out about. And um, yeah, we, we found out about this, this, this strange anomaly that was happening uh, in Ireland. And um, it, it's, it's just been a great basis for a, you know, a really interesting series. Uh, um, and yeah, it's, uh, um, it's, it's not your average war story. <laughs> because where do you see a war movie in which the Germans and allies basically are living next door to each other in peace? You know, they don't want to be, <laughs> but there they are. And in the meantime, they're hosted by Ireland, a neutral country. Um, and uh, yes, it's just very bizarre and, um, uh, and gives a rise to a lot of possibilities, obviously, for a writer. Yeah, directing is, is a, a, another thing. Um, in the past, I've directed plays for the theatre. I've also when I did a lot of fights and stunts, um, the directors who knew me well would just say, okay, this is the scene, go away and do it, uh, which was always fun. So I, you know, I'd done some directing before and obviously being an actor for so many years and a writer, I, I pretty much knew exactly what the director needed to do. Um, and, uh, you know, so it wasn't as much as a, of a shock um, as perhaps it might've been for, you know, someone who didn't know the business. Um, but yeah, it was very interesting. I very much enjoyed, I've always enjoyed working with actors. Um, and uh, although I'm by no means a, a, an expert on the technical side of filmmaking, I surrounded myself with people who were. And that's the important thing. If you don't know about something, get someone who does, because <laughs> you're gonna look great. <laughs> so I had a wonderful um, uh, team, which we put together. Um, because of the subject matter, um, we wanted a, a, as much as possible an all female crew. Um, so we had a female director of photography and uh, um, uh, women throughout the crew, um, except for a couple of, of roles, which, posts, which we just couldn't find a, <coughs> a woman to, uh, to be in. I have to say that was, that was a great experience too. You know, um, uh, the, it was a, a, a largely female cast um, with, look at me, you know, middle-aged white guy, you know, what do I know? <laughs> so I really did need um, their help and support making the movie. And I have to say, I got it. It was a, a very a great experience. Um, of course, not made better by the fact that we had to stop several times for COVID, you know, took enormous precautions, but still, you know, we managed to get some COVID cases and had to stop shooting, which was A, expensive and B, very frustrating. But at the same time, we did shoot during COVID, which in itself is a minor miracle. So, you know, <laughs> we, uh, we managed to get it done. Yeah, it was, it was a great experience. And uh, it's been okay for, you know, a, a lot of the, uh, uh, the named artists, you know, the, the stars and so on. Um, you know, they've pretty much kept working. But the vast majority of, of actors and uh, technicians and, you know, everyone, um, concerned with the entertainment industry that, you know, a, a large majority of them have not worked or at least have worked much less than normal. And um, it's hit people very hard, yeah. Yeah, when I, um, uh, I had a father who was an actor and I used to see him on stage waving swords around. So I was always interested in, in, uh, in stage combat. And when I went to the drama school I went to in, in London, in England, um, they had a fight course, as most drama schools do. Uh, it's very important that actors, A, know how to fight, and B, can look pretty good doing it, um, but also are safe doing it, because it's, you know, it's the one thing where you can really get seriously hurt. Um, so I, I did that course, and then I stayed on in that course as an assistant. And um, when I left drama school, my first job was as an actor, 
uh, the Royal Shakespeare Company, um, playing small parts. But uh, they heard that I, you know, I, I did some fights, so I became assistant to the fight director there. And he fell ill. <laughs> and so I took over all of the fights for the Royal Shakespeare Company for a couple of years. And, um, you know, goodness me, that was a, that was a learning experience. Um, fortunately, I was good enough and knew my stuff enough to be able to get away with it. Um, you know, I was, I was doing fights with, with Ian McKellen. I was doing fights uh, with uh, productions with Judy Dench in it. You know, I mean, just extraordinary, uh, extraordinary artists and a great experience. And I've always enjoyed, um, um, when I was a young actor, you know, doing the fights uh, uh, parallel to, to, to acting. Um, and indeed, uh, um, a few years back now, but I was uh, in the History Channel, I did a whole series um, uh, called Conquest, in which I basically talked about the history of various different weapons, and also taught people, um, a small team of men and women, taught them how to use those weapons. And that was great fun. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's something that I've uh, moved away from a little now because I've just been too busy both acting and writing. Um, but yeah, it was enormously enjoyable and, uh, and, um, and difficult, challenging, you know, um, to make a fight look genuine, especially on stage, um, you know, with screen, at least you can always cover your mistakes and shoot from certain angles, but, uh, on stage, especially it's got to look good. It's got to look real. And, um, I always think that uh, if an actor, um, if you want an act, if you want an actor to do a fight, then just get a good actor, because what stage fighting is about is not about waving swords around. It's about acting. You know, it's an amazing acting process. Um, and yeah, you may use guns, swords, axes, shields, whatever you want to use. Um, but at the same time, if you can't play the scene. Um, a lot of scenes in Shakespeare, for instance, you know, with Romeo and Juliet, um, um, with, with lots of young men sort of, you know, fighting each other. And, and you have to do it in character. You have to learn how to fight in character. You have to learn how to do it safely so you can do it night after night uh, if you're on stage. And um, you have to be convincing. And um, in my experience, uh, uh, if, an actor, if, if an actor is a good actor, then I can work with him or her and make him or her look good um, if they're a good actor. It doesn't matter how much skill you have, you know, if, if I, I, I always used to dread uh, going into fight rehearsals and, and some actor saying, oh, don't worry, I'll be fine. I know martial arts and my heart would sink. And I thought, oh, that's the last thing that I need you to know. <laughs> I'd rather you knew nothing than thinking that you're pretty cool and can be a Bruce Lee. Because absolutely know what it's about, you know, and you might be, might be fighting with, with another actor who has no experience at all. So, you know, being Bruce Lee doesn't help unless you're Bruce Lee. <laughs> and that's why, you know, in, in most of the, certainly in the London drama schools, and I know over here too in the States, um, you know, all actors are, are given some, at least a basic training in, in stage combat. I think it's, apart from being great fun, it's very important. All right, now this will not be good news for, for most people watching. I am not anywhere on social media. I have a Facebook um, page, which somebody else opened for me, and I have no idea, and I can't close it down. You know, I've, I've written to Facebook. I've actually written them letters. Do you remember letters? You get a piece of paper and you write on them, yeah? And I've written Facebook letters, of and I've never got any reply. Um, uh, because it's, this isn't my site. And so, no, I'm, I'm not on social media. And I have to tell you, I don't want to be on social media. My life is full enough as it is. <laughs> I've got writing and acting and, you know, and, and cats and, you know, what else do I need? Um, so, no, I, I, I completely understand my son is on social media. I completely understand it's, it's a great thing. But it's just one more thing that, that you know, I don't need. <laughs> so you can't keep up with me. Uh, but if you want to see Dolphin Island, then yeah, uh, look on look on any web browser and just put in Dolphin Island. And you'll see where that is. And um, and if you really need to keep keep up with me, then I expect you'll find me on Wikipedia or IMDb or any of those. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching the Sarah Scoop Show. Head to sarahscoop.com for more.